On the day that the election was called, and when I got selected, we had five weeks uh, to, to basically go into a constituency that no one thought we had a single hope of doing anything in. The first thing that I was told when I got there was, you do realise this isn't Brighton. No, no one's going to vote for a trans woman in East Worthing and Shoreham. Um, and I was also told that, you know what, we're not actually going to worry about fighting much of a campaign because we've got, we've got Hove and we've got Kemp Town right next to us and they're considered target seats. So, so we're, we're going to put all the uh, resources there. So unlike everyone else, um, I think our entire team was 12 people and we spent £2,000 on our election campaign. Yeah. So whatever you do, do not talk to the, um, the efficiency people at the party because they'll work out that that's quite a good return uh, on actually getting votes. But the thing is, because we had no chance and because we were told that, that we didn't have a chance of winning this, um, we, ha we couldn't go out and knock on door every door in a constituency. I think we must have knocked on less than 1% of the doors. Um, so I had to fall back on old skills, so I was a TV presenter, so like I'm used to doing pieces to camera, so uh, there's me wandering around a constituency with my iPhone, talking to my iPhone all the time. And um, every single video that I posted on Facebook got over 10,000 views. Now two years ago we only got 9,000 votes. <laughs> uh, the main uh, campaign video that I did um, was basically breaking this idea that sort of all politicians are the same. I get people say this to me, oh, I'm not voting, all politicians are the same. I went, when? <laughs> <laughs> so there's this video of me walking across the footbridge in the middle of Shoreham, and effectively I was saying, they tried to tell you that you've got to accept the cards that you're dealt that you can't change the status quo. Whatever you're dealt with at the start of the game, that's what you've got to go with. Well, I'm living proof that you don't have to. I've known that I was transgender since I was seven, and because of that, the first time I attempted to take my own life, I was 12 years old. I've been suicidal for nearly four decades, and yet I decided at the age of 48 that I had to change my life. And I had people coming up to me during the campaign and going, I've no idea who you are, and I've no idea what you stand for, but I sort of get the feeling that you'll stand up for what you believe in. <laughs> but when I first arrived in the constituency, I was told, yeah, but you're going to be a one-issue candidate. It's all going to be equality and diversity, which is actually two issues. <laughs> um, and the thing is, of course, those are really important to me, because... Quite frankly, equality and diversity should be important to every single person in the Labour movement. But my entire campaign was actually based around honesty, integrity and ethics. The main uh, issues that we talked about were housing, education and healthcare. It was all about the future of our children. It wasn't about some neoliberal pipe dream about what a perfect world should be. It was about making a perfect world for our children. Making a world where we can be sure that our children will have a life to grow up to. And the voters responded to that. The funny thing is that the only people that actually made my gender identity an issue during the election campaign were the press. So I actually got lots of press coverage. I, I even got a two-page uh, full spread in the Telegraph um, that was positive. It was in the football section because... <laughs> but I think it was the longest positive story that the Telegraph had ever done about a Labour candidate. Um, out on the streets, my gender identity didn't mean anything to the electorate, apart from the fact that they thought that it meant that it showed that I had strength. And then, on election day, we didn't do a get out the vote, we didn't do any of these things, because we didn't have any people. In fact, all of our people we were sent to neighbouring constituencies to help them. Because even right up to polling day, I was told that we didn't have a chance. And I said, I didn't come in here to lose. I didn't sacrifice my living, because I had to step away from my job as a TV presenter, because Ofcom rules say you can't 
I mean, no matter how much bias is in the mainstream media, but, but I wasn't allowed to do both. So on election day, we didn't do anything, and I remember being still at the count, and I was still on stage, not unlike this, as the sun was coming up through the doors opposite in Worthing Assembly Hall, and I was staring at the other side of the room, and the returning officer just said, Sophie Rose Cook, 20,882. The highest number of votes that a Labour candidate had ever got in that constituency. Despite the fact that I'm trans and like we were going to get slaughtered and we had no resources and all these things. People saw the amazing manifesto that we had. They saw that we had a leader who actually shone in that bloody campaign when everyone was trying to assassinate him and do him down. And they saw that we actually had ethics and that we went out and fought a clean campaign based on the things we believe in and not on trying to do other people down. But the thing is, I mean, that 20,882 is the most votes a trans candidate has ever got in this country. And the, I'm not saying that's a big meal. But the thing is, there's still a long way to go. We've got the most diverse parliament ever, but there's still no trans MPs. Um, and it was brought home to me about a week after. I was in London for a Labour Friends of the Forces uh, debrief, because I'm ex-Air Force, so I was there for that. And just as I'm walking up into Parliament Square, this guy came up to me, and about two inches away from my face, just started shouting that he wanted to see my genitals. <laughs> so no matter how far we go, there's still a long way to go with this. But the thing that I discovered in this election campaign, the thing that I've discovered about this party, and the thing that I've certainly discovered about this conference, which is the most positive, enthusiastic Labour conference that I've ever seen, there's so much optimism out there. <laughs> it's the motto of the football club that I used to work for, AFC Bournemouth. We came from League One all the way up to the Premier League, much the same as Brighton and Hove Albion have done. <laughs> and the motto of that football club sums up our journey from League One to the Premiership. It sums up my journey and my transition, and it certainly sums up the Labour Party and where we are at the moment and how well we did at this election. And that is simply, together, anything is possible. Thank you.